You know, I want to share with you just a little piece of my experience because um, I, I do take this personal. One teacher, a uh, Spanish teacher, who used to uh, host uh, a chess club that I belonged to, told us, you know, for us to go out. I had never been in the valley, I didn't know what it was. Um, they brought us into a room, and they sat us down, they gave us the application, the financial aid application, and said, fill it out. But you know what was interesting is that the people that helped us do that were all students that later I learned were involved in this situation. I'm telling you how old I am without even telling you. So, so don't hold it against me. But the thing that I want to share with you is that I never thought I never imagined in my wildest dreams that I would go to college. So commitment came and uh, it went and I didn't do anything but I'm going to go to And so I started working in downtown LA and what I was doing, I was packaging a cheer in Turkey. No, it's free of charge, but you have to be here to by tonight at six o'clock. I said, "Oh shit!" <laughs> <laughs> so now I have to sit there and convince my mom and my dad to go to college. Now remember, I'm 18 years old. I don't have a car, so she said, "You're gonna go." I said, "Okay." She said, "I'll, I'll start packing." My mom was accustomed to ironing everything. And the handkerchiefs were on. My mom gives me a hug and is crying, taking her handkerchief out and, you know, doing her thing. My dad shakes my hand, and then he shakes my hand and puts a, something in, my, in, my, in the palm of my hand. When I look at it, it's a $5 bill. He says, something to help you out. $5 in those days was a lot. officers and right here walking in unison. Now take one, one of those and imagine 80 people coming before. My black roommate being caught up with this. And as you've heard, he was put down by, by the police. And one of the officers took, took his baton And while he was being held down, he really wasn't fighting, you know, he was just down. The <coughs> officer grabbed the baton and jammed his left back. That was my woman. His name is Sheldon Lennon. 
Paul yielded that. He taught me a lot about his family, his background, what, what it was like to grow up in LA as a black person. I never saw him as a man. And the last I heard is that he moved up to Oakland, the area, to work on, you know, community building. You know, when I think about Sheldon in that experience, I still feel angry about it. I don't know if I could have done anything else, but I knew him. I knew him. So why am I sharing all of this with you? You just saw a film that really depicts a, a really significant part of history for this institution. You've heard, you've heard the cliche, you have to know your history to know how you got there. And you, and you want to know your history because you don't want to repeat the same mistakes. It wasn't about, you know, being Mexican, or you're African American, or you're white. It was really about the injustices of the system. But they also knew that collectively, coming together as a collective, right, they were going to be able to do something. There was struggle in those days, right? There were very serious struggles. But the students held the line. They were not deterred, even, even at the expense of their physical sacrifice, their emotional sacrifice, uh, in some cases, their, their status is huge. So what does that mean? What does that mean when, when a group of young men and women go through those kind of struggles? What does that mean for us? The, the struggles of 40, 45, 46 years ago, over, over time, things, things are different. You guys really have your key in your hands. Your success, as I've always said, is a success of the program. The program is nothing without you as a student. And the program cannot be successful unless you guys are successful. So when you compare the sacrifices that those students made back in the day to what we're asking you to do, there's, there's really no comparison. There really is no comparison.